Can you hear me now? There it goes. There it goes. Getting dried out up here. I know I'll mess with this in here and it won't work right forever. Now bear with me. The only thing about this in here is I can hear myself talk. <clears throat> you ever listen to yourself talk? <laughs> Sounds weird, ma'am. <laughs> oh. Meeting adjourned. No, I'm kidding. Bless her heart. All right. My involvement in the local church. We're going to start out in Acts um, chapter 14. So I'll give you a head start getting there. We're going to be in Acts. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians. We're going to be in um, Ephesians. And eventually 3 John. And So it's going to be several more. And, and after I get home, I'm going to hear about it from my wife. Instead of just taking one scripture and saying what i got to say. And, but I will give you all a chance to get there. Do I have to stand here for this thing not to squeal and carry on? Is it going to hinder me from moving around? There we go. There we go. All right. Y'all know I can't stand still. Y'all know that. All right. Have you made it to Acts chapter 14, verses 27 yet? You yeah? have? Okay. All right. All right. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you once again. We thank you for Jesus. Lord, we thank you for you. We thank you for our salvation. And Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, I ask that you would speak through me. Lord, that you would give me what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. And Lord, I ask that you would uh, soften our hearts and minds to be receptive to your word, Lord. That you can be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Brother Tom, can you, turn, can you turn my monitors down just a hair bit, please? Let's see what we... There you go. Okay, much better. Thank you. Much better. All right. All right. So, so the local church. So what is my involvement in the local church? We just come here and hang out three days a week and, and uh, soak up the preaching and the teaching and, and the Word of God. Is that, is that what we do? Well, some do, yeah. I mean, we've got to be realistic about it. Some do. Uh, it's not what we're supposed to do, Amen. I'm not supposed to do that. Y'all have heard me say this enough, and y'all know I preach on the church enough. How many know you have a spiritual gift? That everybody in here has heard me say it, maybe with the exception of the Andersons, but they know it too. So we all we all have a spiritual. I'm not I'm not preaching on that tonight. I'm preaching on our involvement. All right. Acts 14, 27 says um, and when they were come and had gathered the church together alright the first thing we need to look at and it's kind of brief because we, we know what the church is or, or we should know what the church is and I don't say that in a belittling, belittling factor but we should know what the church is the church is not the building the church is God's people God's called out the saved people okay all right. Um, sometimes a refresher doesn't hurt. But it's not a building. Acts 14, 27, and when they were come and had gathered the church together. Well, you don't gather buildings together, amen? You just don't do it. Maybe with the exception of Hugo or down in Florida where the storms are, you normally don't gather buildings together. All right. So it's the people. It's the people of God, the, the redeemed, the saved ones. All right, and as bad as, I don't want to say this, but being a Baptist, independent Baptist, it's not a denominational group, all right? <laughs> it's not. 
they are some Baptists that would have you to believe that they are the church, period, and that's it. <laughs> and unless you're in, within their group, you're not saved, you're not going to heaven, you're not part of the church. Now, I say that about Baptists because I can pick on Baptists. I can also pick on the Pentecostal Holiness and the Church of God because I was saved in the Pentecostal Holiness Church and I was in a Church of God for about five years. So yes, I can pick on those three denominations. Amen? All right. And it's surprising what you hear in the Pentecostal denominations. All right. That's why I'm not in there no more. God, God sent me out of there. All right. A local church is a body of men and women who have been saved and called by God to serve. To serve. We're called to serve. Everybody has a function. Everybody can do something. All right? And, and, and the church is the saved multitude of Christ from everywhere. China, Russia, Yugoslavia, everywhere, the Caribbean. It's all the saved people. All right, look at 1 Corinthians 12, 20, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 12, and we're going to be in 14 through 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 14 through tw verses 14 through 27. All right. <clears throat> and here, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. Maybe the independent Baptist church at Corinth. I, I, I really don't know. It sounded good, so I just figured I'd say that. But All right. Um, all right, verses 14 through 27. Let's read all the way through this, and we're going to come back and open it up a little bit. Starting in verse 14 of chapter 12. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? Let's pause right there. Can you imagine that if you were just an eye? Yeah. If you were just an eye. Now, I like ice cream and pie and all that good stuff. That would be torturous to see pie and ice cream and ye old-fashioned double cheeseburger. And you have no feet to go get it. You have no hands to go get it. You have no mouth, taste buds. All you can do is look at it. That would be awful, amen? No, amen? Amen, all right. If you don't like ye old fashioned, I need to see you after service. All right. If the whole were hearing, where, would, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. <clears throat> I want to hit that one one more time. Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Do you think you're here by random accident? No. I just, I just don't believe you are. I don't. Now, you, you, they may have been some things of this particular church or this body or, or Pastor Boofer that you liked or your Sunday school teacher or whatever. But you're here because God wanted you here for whatever reason. All right? But whatever it was, it pleased God. Whether for me to grow, for me to be corrected, for me to help out. It, it was as it pleased God. Verse 19, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet one body. And I know this is rudimentary, I know that. But we're one body. We are one body of the church. Period. Verse 21, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Referencing the ice cream and hamburger once again. If the head can see it, but they can't get to it, it's no good. Amen? All right. 
<clears throat> it takes everybody. Verse 22, Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble, and I really like this so much, are necessary. Are necessary. That means I'm necessary in here somewhere. Amen? For whatever I do, I'm, I'm, I'm necessary here. Verse 23, And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts, that means the less attractive parts, <clears throat> have more abundant comeliness. They become, as we would say, better looking, okay, or more attractive. The parts that we think we should just overlook. And I'm going to expound on that one there in particular here in just a little bit. For our comely, and the comely means attractive, nice, parts have no need. Oh, shucks. Well, so, so maybe a, a really, so maybe a really attractive you just take that however you want to do it. A really attractive person in church that that is doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that. Guess what? They're the same as uh, as, as what I'm going to get to in a few minutes. And 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 what I'm going to I'm going to use the analogy of a pituitary gland. Y'all know what that is, or you heard of it? All right, I know you medical guys do, ladies. Pituitary gland. We'll get to that in a minute. All right? Verse 24. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. All right? Do, do you feel like you just don't do much? What, did, what, what does God say here? Given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Verse 25 that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. All right? Are you on board with me so far? Say amen. All right. Praise God. All right. So let's, uh, let's look in here just a little bit. Um, we didn't touch on verse 18, so we know we're here for a reason, all right? And we know we're one body. We're here because God put us here. We're one body. God has a reason for us being here, all right? And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. I need y'all. The pastor needs y'all. Thank you. I had I said that, my humility would have flew right out the window. But yes, ma'am, that's right. <laughs> we all need each other. Much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Have you thought about the the folks that do the the, the care around the building, the cleaning of the building, inside and out? How awful it would look if they wasn't doing that. It would just be awful. Wouldn't it be attractive to those folks riding down the road if they seen knee-high grass out here and trash all in the yard and everything falling apart? No, it wouldn't. It just would not be attractive, all right? All right. <clears throat> so what about the uh, <laughs> our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness? Our not-so-attractive parts have a greater attractiveness. The pituitary gland, all right? It's a little gland in the brain, little bitty thing I understand about the size of a pea. It's little. Y'all know what that little thing does? That little thing, without this gland and without it functioning properly, we couldn't manage stress. Our body couldn't manage growth. Y'all familiar with Robert Wardlaw? 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 He was right at eight feet tall. 
when he was like six years old, he was about six foot tall. The pituitary gland got out of hand. And back then, I think the 20s or 30s, when he was alive, they didn't know nothing about it. So it got out of hand. And ultimately, this, this guy was immense. Look him up when you get home. Robert Wadlow. Wadlow. I know I'm, I'm hacking up his last name. It killed him. His size killed him. Because something the size of my little fingernail got out of whack. We don't want that here. Amen? We want this place to flourish for God's glory and honor. I don't want to be the pituitary gland <laughs> that gets out of whack and stunts the growth of the church or compromises to try to get it to, to grow too much. Amen? Or to get it to grow, period. I want it to grow just as big as God wants it. But I want it with, with what God, how God wants to do it. Amen? All right. So the little pituitary gland, without it we couldn't manage stress. Our body couldn't manage growth. Reproduction would be affected. And other processes. They're like children. You have children. If your pituitary gland was out there in the left field doing its own thing, guess what? You're not going to have little Bobby or Susie. A much greater risk of not having them. It takes everybody, even the pituitary gland, working to keep to keep God's house going. All right, everything has to work in sync together. All right. You know the pituitary gland; it doesn't try to run the body. It doesn't. So, and all you medical folks, y'all probably going to straighten me out on this, but as the best as I can understand, the, 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 the brain runs things for the most part. Yeah, let's don't break this thing down where I can't understand it, alright? So the brain runs things, the feet, the eyes see the apple pie, and the old fashioned cheeseburger. The feet run to it, the hand picks it up, the mouth takes over, eats it, the tongue with the taste buds enjoys it, tells you got to have more, the brain's like, ah, nope, 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 you don't have a double. And y'all see their order of fries, they're like this, they're huge, really good. And you get ice cream with it, it's number six combo. Everything is working together to make that enjoyable. Amen? That's how we got to be here. Everything's got to be working together to make this run just as smooth. We have enough. We have enough issues from outside. Amen? We have enough. The spiritual world, as I understand, there's, there's, there's demons everywhere. I'm sure there's demons in here. They're not going to leave nothing alone. So we have enough, enough problems from outside. We don't need to manufacture anymore. All right, so it doesn't try to run the body. If it did, the body would be in turmoil. Robert Wardlow. All right, so every member's contribution is important. Let, let me run down through a little brief list here. This comes out of 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 27. Each member has a different function. No one member can function alone. Each member's contribution is important. A properly functioning body operates as a single unit. All right? Uh, I know I've told you all a blue million times I used to uh, like to lift weights. I like to lift weights now, but my body won't stand it. Everything had to work correctly. Everything did. Even from rest to eating right and all that. Y'all, I used to eat right. I used to not have all this. Trust me. My wife would look at our wedding picture and go, Oh, you were so skinny then. She, so I'm like 285 now. And when we got married, I was 225. She, she said I was skinny then. So praise God. <laughs> but everything's got to work together good. To, to make it happen. If you go to, if you go to do a, a deadlift, 
Your mind has to comprehend it. It has to load the bar. You have to position yourself. You have to have the correct form. You have to lift correctly. Everything has to work together correctly as a single unit. S supposing, supposing my right arm goes, well, I'm just going to deadlift today, but you guys hang out. It's not going to work. You're going to pull something loose. You're going to get hurt. You're going to make a complete fool out of yourself. All right? All right. Verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Miss Becky, um, kind of answer this in your own mind. When when I got the call Saturday morning, I don't I don't know her very well. I want to say that she was attending in and out a little bit when we first started coming here, and I just didn't know her that well. But I was affected by what I heard, you know, on the other end of the phone. I was affected by that. Do, do, do we get affected when we hear something bad happens to one of our members? We should. We should. You know, it was, it was tragic for Miss Becky. All right, so on the other hand, verse 26, continue on, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or... I like this. Or, one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. All the members rejoice. Do we, do we celebrate with other believers or other church members when, when they have something good, when they, re, when they receive a blessing? We should. We really should. Now, we live in a sinful world. And... Jealousy is abundant, amen? It is. Or, or, here's one. You know what? Brother, I could do that better. I could do that better. I guarantee it. I don't know why I'm not doing it, but I could do it better. Amen? I had a jealous streak when I was in church. I've been saved four or five years, and I was learning how to teach Sunday school. <clears throat> For whatever reason, the, the class that I was part of, was it was in the sanctuary, because I think they was having a, a, a skit or whatever, was, and they were getting ready in our class and, and all that, and it was not my turn to teach that Sunday. Well, it was Roy's turn to teach that Sunday, and Roy was a pretty good teacher. But it was in the sanctuary. Yeah. Sanctuary that would seat, I don't know, 300? 300 to 400? Now, there wasn't that many in there. But guess what? Guess where I wanted to be teaching? I wanted to be right where he was at, up there behind the pulpit with the microphone. I wanted to be teaching. It took a while for God to get that drug out of me and buried all right? It took a while. Because I had a jealous streak. And he had been saved longer than I have. He knew more of the Bible than I did. You know. Um, and it was his Sunday to teach. And that's just how it worked out. And, and, and isn't it amazing how God will allow that or usher that in? However he sees fit to where you can use that analogy. <laughs> Years down the road, amen? All right. When somebody's honored, be, or somebody does something good, honor them. Honor them. Um, you know, we, we've had some changes around here and some different positions open up. And, and hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for it, you know. The food for the kids, the, the book bags, you know, young couples taking over the kids, praise God. We should support them 100%. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. All right. Look in, um, look in Acts 2, 
Acts chapter 2, 41 through 47. Acts 2, 41 through 47. And we need to understand the biblical function of the local church. <clears throat> Y'all there? Acts 2, 41 through 47. All right. So let's, uh, let's read that. Then we'll go back. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So, so that, that makes sense, amen? So we have saved people here in, the, in what we would say the local church. And look at, um, look at verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Now, partially I don't believe that that was the, the entirety of that, that they were just all sitting together. But they were, they were together. Can, can two walk together? Oh gosh, I, I, just, I just butchered it up. I remembered half of the verse. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? No, no, you can't. Supposing when Suzanne and I got married that she wanted to get married here and I wanted to get married yonder. Well, that would be a catastrophe, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. It just would not work. Y'all been there, hadn't you? <laughs> we almost was and, and we compromised. She done it my way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we have to be in unity together, amen? All right. Um, here are some of the functions of, of, this, of the church. Teaching the word of God. We see that in verse 42. Fellowship with other believers, verse 42. Prayer, verse 42. Observation of the two ordinances of the church, baptism and the Lord's Supper, verses 41 42. Testifying to God's grace and power. Mutual assistance and ministry. No, verses 44 45. How did that sneak in there? Mutual assistance and ministry. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. If God's calling you to do verse 45, then praise God. Y'all reading verse 45 real close now, aren't you? All right. Um, in short, they were helping one another. Whatever the need was, they were helping. They were helping. Um, glorifying and praising God, verse 47. It, is, it, it would be tough for me to praise God. If, and I, I love Miss Sarah, y'all know that. If, if I had... If she and I were on the outs because I just walked by and I didn't speak to her or something, or you don't know how I walked by and just do her little hair like that, it'd be awful if, let's just, let's just say, if, if she was mad at me, all right? If she was mad at me and, and she didn't speak to me and I didn't speak to her, what would that do to the worship experience in here, praising God? It would quench it. Quench not who? The Holy Spirit. Now, he could be quenched a multitude of ways, and that's not what this sermon's about. <clears throat> but unity, praising God. I used to be involved in the upstate when I was up there with an organization called Feast for Peace Crusades. And 
we would partner up with local churches. We would go out. We would set up a, a, a instruments. Would sing, play instruments, worship and praise God, and we would feed the people. And here was the premise behind that. Um, John Dill, he had he had the vision for this, and it was, and we would go into. Um, we would go into culturally diverse neighborhoods, racially diverse neighborhoods, and the the thought was was it's hard to be arguing and fighting when you're standing there next to someone having a meal, amen. It is. Now I know some people can pull that off at home. Y'all can sit there and argue and fight while you're eating a thirty-five dollar steak, but you know it's just no. That's not how it's supposed to be at all. All right. Let's look at the first priority of the local church. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. I told you all I was going to bounce you around a little bit tonight. It's good for you. Bible drills. <clears throat> If you're there, say amen. amen. All right. Verse 11. <clears throat> and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things which is the head even Christ that we all may grow up in all things even unto Christ alright um, so during our Christian life we should grow through three broad and general stages as outlined in Ephesians 12. We're to be perfected as a saint. Alright, so perfected here is mature. We know we're not going to be perfect here on earth. Amen? We're going to be mature. That's what we should shoot for is being mature. Our first priority should be submission to the teaching of the Word of God and learning to be the person God wants you to be. Now, I, I, I listen to our pastor and I have yet to find anything amiss that he's teaching or preaching. It, it's, it's rock solid. So why should I not listen to him? I should, amen? Amen. What he's, what he's preaching and teaching is truth. I don't, I don't come here just to hang out and, 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 and all that. I come here to be instructed, to be edified, to be built up. All right. <clears throat> We're to do the work of the ministry. And this here is where we participate. Going back to this gift we have, this minimum of one gift we have. Some of y'all have multiple gifts. Multiple. And we need to use them. Alright. In time, we will naturally go to the point where we can begin to serve and take on some basic functions through the already established ministries of our church. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can get up with pastor. Or your deacon. Or, or, or myself. And we can help get you plugged in. We got Brother Joe plugged in. Taking prayer requests and praying over them. Who don't want somebody praying for them? If, you, if, if you're saved, I want you praying for me. Amen. I need it. Pray for me. There are some folks in here that told me they had been praying for me. And, and, um, and I really appreciate that. And they had expressed to me that they had seen, they had seen positive results of that prayer. And I, and I appreciate it. I really do. I really do. I need it. All right, we're to edify, <clears throat> excuse me. We're to edify the body of Christ. 
edify. That is, edify is interpret, excuse me, defined as instruct or build up. We're to instruct and build up. I'm instructing you guys right now. And hopefully building you up. Because I don't want to tear nobody down. I just, I don't want to do it. I want you to be instructed. I want you to be everything that God has for you. And to do everything that God wants you to do. I want you to be mature. Perfected as the King James says. I want you to be mature in the word. In the Lord. Alright, as our growth continues, we should reach the point where we can begin to minister to others in the same way others have ministered to you. Is that good or bad for some of us? <clears throat> I've had some really good teachers through the years. <clears throat> I've had <clears throat> I've had some <laughs> uh, <laughs> not so good things come my way. All right? And you just kind of question it. You go, really? I see that coming. Why? <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> look at, um, look at, look at 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Turn back to the left just a little bit. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And if you don't remember this one by heart, the chapter and book, chapter and verse, you will know it immediately. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the, what does that say? Glory of the God. The glory of God. What does that tell us? You, you know, th this, is, this is one of those things where you don't need a concordance and 16 commentaries to figure out what's going on here. Amen? Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. <clears throat> Y'all know I like to drive a little fast. Y'all know that. Does that bring glory to God? Breaking civil laws? Mm. Is that person I talked about last week, does that, does that bring glory to God? Is that person that I shared the last three brain cells I have with because I thought I was superior, does that glorify God? No. Y'all can answer that, it doesn't. It doesn't. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Before, before we're critical, rude, or whatever, we need to ask, is this going to glorify God? Is he going to build that person up? Before I talk to my buddy about that person on the job, how I just think he's just... Uh, Cranely insufficient to me. Does it glorify God? Does it build that guy up? Is that guy lost? And what I'm saying going to get back to him and he goes, well, you know, well, if that's being a Christian, man, I, just, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Is that going to be a reaction? All right. God's love must so permeate our motives that all we do is for His glory. Now, now y'all don't misunderstand me. I fail here too, okay? I, I do. I, I fail here. I do. We need to keep this as a guiding principle by asking, is this action glorifying God or how can I honor God through this action? If you can't, if I can't, we don't need to do it. Amen? And I know we can cop out and we can go, well, we live in a sinful world. You know, everybody does it. No, no. Let's don't do it. Look at 3 John chapter 1. Right before you get to Revelation. Right before you get to Jude and Revelation. 3 John.
like a, like a, like some other people. I ain't gonna say like y'all, but um, when I got saved, I didn't know there was another three other Johns back there. All right, Third John, one nine and ten. John says, I wrote unto the church, but, the, but Diotrephes, who love to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Y'all ever seen that person in past churches? I know we don't have nobody like that here. Y'all ever seen that person in past churches? You could just, you could go visit a church, you walk through there, and you go, yep, there's Diotrephes right there. Uh-huh. You could just see them. Verse 10. Let's see, let's go back. Verse 9, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. He won't have nothing to do with them. Wherefore, if I come, <clears throat> I will remember his deeds which he doeth. Prating against us with malicious words, mm, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would... He didn't, even, he didn't want nothing to do with other Christians. And then he's throwing spiritual rocks at those that would receive them. He's just a rascal. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church. Well, he was a joker, wasn't he? There was that one guy in church. That was him right there. That's him. Wrecking havoc through there. Maybe that church was good. I don't know. I haven't studied this church, but maybe it was doing good. Maybe it was trying to grow. Uh, maybe they had their little ups and downs, but you got this one individual that he's just, you know, he wanted control. All we know about Diotrephes is that he wanted to control the church. John denounces, one, his refusal to listen to other spiritual leaders. Two, his slander of the leaders. So not only did he want, not want to listen, he wanted to talk about them. We had an uh, impromptu meeting one night at a, a, another church, and, <clears throat> and um, I still kick myself for not doing this. When they wanted to have the meeting at a restaurant, the first thing I should have asked was, where's the pastor? That's the first thing I should have asked is, where's the pastor? Because that's what the meeting was about. They didn't like him. They want him out. And I should have said, where's he at? Then I should have left. All right. Three, his bad example in refusing to welcome any gospel teachers. And four, his attempt to excommunicate those who opposed his leadership. He's trying to run them off. I don't like what you're doing. I'm not in agreements with it. Y'all need to go. I'm going to get you out one way or the other is what he's saying. You know, there's, there's, there's some, there's some uh, companies that, um, in, um, particularly in the construction business, if, if you're not just making the grade, so to speak, and, and um, so they'll see so if they hire you in as an equipment operator and they actually see you can't operate, they'll just keep moving you down eventually putting you on a shovel so you're starved out or you just go, no, nah, I ain't doing this. So that, that's, maybe that's what Diotrephes is trying to, something similar here, trying to do. It's five after, y'all bear with me. Um, sins such as pride, jealousy, jealousy, and slander are still present in the church. It's here. Excuse me. It's there. It's there. If no one speaks up, great harm can come to the church. We must confront sin in the church. Y'all know what he was doing was sinful? The face, he was, he, was, he was sinning. Amen? If we ignore it, it will continue to grow. It will be just like a snowball going downhill. All right? We don't want anything to get out of control. All right, y'all. I've seen a car. Is anybody riding in a silver car that maybe is coming here to pick you up? I've seen a silver car out there. We need to invite them in next time. But, all right. I will stop right there. Um, 
Let's, uh, let's honor God's house, God's people. Do what God said do. I, I got enough to worry about me. Let alone worry about Steve. <laughs> Trying to keep him straight. <laughs> I know, sister, I know. Could y'all see me trying to take his position? I'm, this man, it's probably his whole family is fluent in Chinese. And all I can do is point to number six on the menu. And y'all see me trying to take over what he's doing? I wouldn't even know what airport to fly into. I'd make a complete mess out of that. But brother, we're glad to have y'all on board. We really are. You and your family. All right. All right. We're going to stop there, okay? Let's pray and we'll be dismissed, all right? Lord God, we do thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessings. Lord God, thank you for, well, your whole word is truth, your truth. Lord, I ask that you'd move on us to apply this to our lives, that you would be glorified and honored. And Lord, that your kingdom would grow. And Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, you guys. Dismissed.